Hey everyone, Dan here. Let's dig a little deeper into the develop module. We'll talk about how to use it to really optimize our photo. Now this is a photo shot here in Portland at the St. John's Bridge. This is straight out of camera. I'm going to show you how to adjust the tone and the color and then make a few other fine tuning adjustments. For me, my goal in develop is always to optimize the photo to kind of to back to what it was in nature, what was my impression of the photo when I was standing there. Then when it comes to doing special effects, I'll typically go to effects for doing that. But in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the tone and color pane, detail, lens correction, and transform. Those are the key ones that we're going to use here in develop. One of the first things I'm going to do on most photos is I'm going to crop it and use the retouching tool to remove anything that's distracting. So let's grab the crop tool first. The reason I want to crop this particular photo isn't that there's something distracting, it's actually that the photo is a little bit crooked. If you notice, the bridge appears to be tilted just a little bit. This happens to me all the time. I have a hard time taking a level photo, so I'm just going to select the crop tool, I'm going to select the leveler, and then I'm just going to drag along something that I know should be level. So I know the line from the top of the bridge through the center of the bridge should be level. So I can do that, and you notice how it's now rotated the photo one degree to correct for that rotation. The next thing I would do is I would do any of the retouching, anything that was a distraction that I needed to remove with any of the retouching tools over here, like the perfect eraser or the retouch brush or the clone stamp tool, I would try to remove now as well. Although you can always come back and use those later. This photo, I actually don't really have any. There was a little branch that was up here at the top before I cropped that I would have removed, but when I cropped it, I managed to crop it out as well. The next step is gonna be adjusting the tone and the color. When I adjust the tone and the color, the first thing I want to do is I want to look at the overall exposure for the scene. The easy way to do that is to look up here at the levels. Make sure that you're on the levels tab or the histogram tab. And this will show you a histogram or think of it as the distribution of the tones inside of your photo. Now a photo like this is a little underexposed. I mean, it's a little darker than ideal. And the histogram, the weight of the information is to the left hand side. Most photos that have a balanced histogram, it's going to be a little bit in the darks and a little bit in the lights, and most of the weight is going to be in the middle. And that's the way we're going to adjust this photo, is to kind of get back to that. To move the mass left or right, you're going to do that with the exposure slider. So if I move the exposure slider to the left, you see how the mass moves to the left and gets clipped off. And if I move it to the right, it's going to spread out and move to the right. That's going to lighten the photo. So what I want to do is I want to move that exposure slider, watching my photo and watching for what we call clipping, anything that is white or black without detail. And an easy way to see that is there's clipping indicators up here in the top corners that will tell you if the photo has any clipping. You can also turn those on and it will then show you in the preview window, anything that's pure black will show up as blue and anything that's pure white will show up as red. So with that on, I can move this up. And if I move it all the way to the top, you can see a bunch of stuff turns red. That's completely overexposed. That's white with no detail at all. We don't want that, obviously. So what I want to do is I want to bring this back until I have just the first edge of information touching the side. So there's a little bit of that red channel. I want to watch that until it comes right to the edge of it. That red channel, some of that information is probably the subtle highlights in these leaves. And if I started to move that too far, I would start to lose those subtle highlights here and in here. So I want to be mindful of that as I adjust that exposure, but I'm not losing that information. So there we go. I've adjusted my exposure. The next thing I want to adjust are the black and the white points. And we'll come down to the white and black slider for doing that. I tend to do the blacks first, that's just me. When I adjust the black point, I want to hold down that J key on my keyboard. If I don't have those clipping indicators turned on, I'm going to pull it to the left until I start to see blue. Anything that's pure blue is 100% black. And I want to have just a touch of that real black in most photos. And the amount of black you're going to have is going to kind of depend on the photo that you're working on. For example, if it's a theater photo on a dark stage, you might have a lot more black, or if you're shooting outside in the snow, you might not have any real black at all. But on a photo like this, I want to have just a little bit of real black in there. And that real black is what's going to give you contrast. It's what's going to make the photo have some punch to it. The next we'll adjust is the whites. Now, depending on your photo, you may not actually have any pure whites in it. So if I bring my whites all the way up, you can see I'm not really ever clipping on this particular photo. I'm getting very close on some of these highlights up here. And I just wanna watch those and be mindful of it. If you don't really have a specular highlight, if you don't have the sun or a bright white light source, you might not ever see any pure white in your photo. So I'm gonna adjust that up, being mindful of the highlights on the leaves and the color in the bridge to make sure those are still being maintained. There we go. Once I get those adjusted, I'll turn that clipping off so I can see what the overall photo looks like. Now, 
I'm just going to turn the preview on and off so you can see what we've done so far. We've adjusted the orientation, or we've, we've leveled it using the crop tool, and we've adjusted the exposure and the highlights and the shadows. Just doing that has made a huge difference in the photo. There's the original, there's after those modest adjustments. Next comes some more subjective adjustments using the highlight, midtone, and shadow sliders. This literally lets you change the tonality of the photo. I'm a big fan of the shadow slider. I think the shadow slider in Photo Raw is amazing. It really lets you reveal a ton of additional information in the shadows in a photo. Now, this one, because we already adjusted the exposure up, doesn't need a whole lot. I might do just a little bit, and you're going to see that principally in these areas underneath the bottom of the bridge. So I'm going to bring up the shadows just a little bit, and I might bring my highlights down just a little, and that's going to help me maintain the detail in those leaves. There we go. That's looking pretty good. The next adjustment I want to go to is Structure and Haze. The Structure slider is going to bring up the local contrast. Think of it as the detail in your photo. When you adjust structure, you want to make sure you're zoomed into 100%. So I'm going to make sure I zoom up to 100, and I'm going to look for areas of detail as I bring up that Structure slider. It's very easy to go overboard with a Structure slider. It's a very tempting slider to go high with, so key, be mindful. You only want to go up probably 10 or 15 in most cases. Below that is the haze slider. The haze slider is kind of special purpose. There's not too many times you're going to use it. However, on this photo, because it was shot in the morning in Portland, there is a little bit of atmospheric distortion, a little bit of haze. So I'm going to use that haze slider just to bring the haze down a little bit. And this, think of it like a, like a haze filter on your camera. It's just going to reduce the haze. It's going to increase the color, increase the contrast a little bit. There we go. That looks pretty good. So now I've really adjusted the tonality. Again, let's turn that preview on and off so you can see there's before, there's after. You know, in second thought, now that I look at it, I think the greens in the bridge are a little too bright. So I'm just going to come up here and grab my exposure slider. I'm gonna bring that down just a little bit to help maintain that, bring my shadows up just a little bit to compensate. And that's kind of a balancing act you'll go through, adjusting the exposure, the highlights, and the shadows until you really get the tonality that you want. Now let's move on to some of the other options. There's the color section. This is going to help you adjust the color balance in the photo. Now this is showing the as shot settings. This was shot probably at a daylight or close to daylight setting. You could override that using any of the built-in white balance presets. These are useful if you happen to have photographed under a different lighting condition and you forgot to set the white balance in your camera. Of course, you can use an auto option or you can use the dropper tool to click on something that you know should be gray. On this photo, there's nothing that I know should be gray, and there's not really much of a color cast. If anything, I might want to move it just a little bit more to the yellow side. There we go. And I'm also going to bring up the vibrance a little bit. That'll make the colors jump out a bit more. Again, let's take a look at the before and the after. There's before and after. The next step is going to be adjusting the details. We're really looking at the noise in the photo and the amount of details. Whenever we adjust anything in the details pane, we want to make sure we zoom up to that 100% setting and try to find a place in the photo where you can see both sharp details and continuous tone areas like the sky. So this one's pretty easy. I've got lots of crisp details along here and the sky behind. Now I want to adjust the noise reduction to remove that. Whenever you adjust the noise reduction, start with the luminance slider and hold down the Option key or the Alt key on your keyboard. This will give you a grayscale interpretation of the photo, which you can then see. So as I adjust that up, I'm just going to look for when that noise in the sky goes away or the amount of reduction that we want. If you grew up on film like I did, that bit of noise isn't objectionable. You might want to keep a certain amount of that there. It adds a little bit of structure to the photo as well. So the amount slider is exactly that. It is just the amount of the reduction. The detail slider controls the size of the noise reduction. So you'll adjust the detail based on the size of the noise, often based on the ISO of the camera. So higher ISOs need a larger detail slider amount to reduce that noise. So there we go. Up around 60 for each, I've done a pretty good job of reducing the noise in the sky. The sky is nice and clear, and it's reduced the noise underneath the bridge as well while maintaining the detail, which is very important. The color section is for reducing color noise. You adjust it the same way. Again, hold down that Option key or the Alt key, and when you do that and you move the color slider, you'll actually see just the color in the photo. We actually suck out all of the detail, and all you're looking at is just the color information. And you're going to adjust it the same way. Just adjust it up until you see that color noise disappear. In this case, I really see that color noise in the under areas in the bridge in here. So watch as I grab that and I adjust that slider for color noise up, it will reduce the color noise in that area. So now that becomes cleaner and more monochromatic. We don't get that 
crazy color noise underneath there. And the detail slider works the same way. It's adjusting the size of that color noise reduction. Okay, looking pretty good. We could also add some additional sharpening now. I always do the noise reduction before the sharpening. Now we could increase that sharpening up to taste as well. Bring the amount slider up until you just start to see the noise being amplified again. Then use the threshold slider, hold down the option key or the alt key, and this will show you an edge mask of where the sharpening gets applied. You want to adjust the threshold so that only the edges are receiving the sharpening. A pretty low setting of one to five is typically used for this. There we go, that looks great. So now we've sharpened the edges and we've reduced the noise everywhere else. Next, let's turn on lens correction. Lens correction, if it's not already on, will detect the lens on your camera and automatically correct for distortion, peripheral fall off, and chromatic aberration. Let me zoom back to fit. Let's go ahead and turn that on. I'm gonna roll it down. You can see how it's detected my lens that I was using that day, and it in turn has corrected the barrel distortion, reduced the peripheral fall off, and has added chromatic aberration control so I don't have any green or yellow fringing added to the photo. And I can override those settings down below, or if I don't have a lens profile for my particular lens, I can manually adjust these settings as well. All right, again, let's take a look at the before and the after. There's the original, there's after. You can really see as the photo comes along. Now this is kind of the ideal. This is back what it looked like when I photographed it. Now we can actually go through and do some more creative adjustments. If you click on the show more option, you'll see additional options you can add and develop. Things like doing a black and white conversion or adding the curves if you need to do a curve style adjustment, split tones, vignette, things like that. I'm gonna use a couple different ones. First one I wanna use is the transform tool. The transform tool lets you adjust for additional distortion or perspective changes in your photo. Now, because I'm photographing up, the bridge appears to be leaning back a little bit. So I can use the vertical slider to compensate for this. So if I tilt that vertical slider forward, you can see how I can change the perspective and remove some of that distortion in the bridge. There we go, just like that. I can also tweak the rotation if I need to. When I made that change, it also feels like it's leaning a little bit, so I can grab that rotation slider. Now tweak that to get just the angle that looks good to my eye. There we go. So there's that bit of a transform that I made to reduce some of the distortion. Let's go ahead and bring out those fall colors a bit more. I'm gonna click on the Show More button again, and I'm gonna add the color adjustment. Color adjustment lets you target a specific color range, and then from that color range, you can make it, you can shift its hue to change its color. You can also change its saturation or its brightness. There's some built-in styles that make it easy to make an adjustment. So if I grab the fall preset in here, this fall style, you notice how it's automatically shifted the yellows to be more orange. So if I come down and I select the yellow option, you can see how it's moved those more to the orange instead of the greens and it's increased their saturation a bit. So it made those fall colors look even more fall. And you can do compound adjustments. Let's say that now I want to take the sky and I want to darken it. So I could click on the blue color option and then use the brightness slider to reduce the color of the brightness in the sky if I wanted to. Same thing with the bridge. If I want to shift the color of the bridge a bit, I can grab the aqua or the green slider to influence those as well. So let's darken that bridge down a little bit and make it a little bit more saturated. So you can really see how you can target those individual color ranges to override them. Last but not least, let's add a little vignette. So I'll click on show more. I'll turn the vignette pane on. I'll grab one of the styles. Big Softy is one of my favorite places to start. And then I'll just use the brightness slider to adjust how dark I want those edges to become. Perfect, there we go. Let's take a look at the before and the after. There's before, and there's after. Let's take it up one more notch. I'm gonna use a local adjustment to bring up a little bit more detail on the bridge. So we'll click on the local adjustments tab. I'm gonna use the built-in detail style. This will paint with detail as I wanna paint. I'll grab the brush tool. I'm gonna to make sure that the perfect brush option is on. That way it's only going to paint this effect on the colors that I ask, rather than affecting the sky around it. And now I'm just gonna paint this in just on the bridge. So only in the areas that I paint, only the colors underneath that in the bridge work are actually gonna get this adjustment.
There we go. Let me turn that on and off so you can see. There's before and after, enhancing the sharpness and detail in the bridge using that detail local adjustment tool. And again, let's take a look at the overall before and after. There's our original out of camera shot, and there's our after. We were able to optimize the color and tone, correct the level and distortion, enhance those fall colors, and bring out detail where we want, and reduce noise everywhere. Thanks for watching.